Okay, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen from both online and offline. Um, can you hear me well? No. Mm. Do I need to open anything? Hello, can you hear me? No? Can you hear me? <laughs> Connection is not very well. It's okay. Speak louder. And louder. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Yes, oh, that was working. You fixed it. Good. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming to my presentation. I'm less nervous now because all basically are my friends in the room. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, no matter how many times I present, I'm always very nervous in advance, but it's very good to have some supportive faces in front of me. So um, this presentation is going to last for about 30 minutes, and hopefully there will be about 10 minutes for QA. And uh, this is basically to report from a project that I am currently doing, um, which receives funding from both the Kakenhi and the uh, MAJ Research and Development Grant. And it's about building a platform using Moodle called researchic.com. So this all idea about hosting online journal club events to help students learn better about how to read um, educational um, scientific literature and all came from a hobby project two years ago. And then I thought about building it into a formal uh, education system that can benefit a global scale of research students from different countries. So a little bit different from um, using Moodle as a course management system. I intended to use it as an event management system using this project. So just a little bit summary about what's going to, uh, cover, to be covered in this presentation. First, I'm going to talk about the budget and spending, especially about the MAJ R&D development, uh, R&D grant that I received. Then I will cover a little bit about technical aspects about the platform. And then I will introduce the event management and project management using Moodle and a little bit detail about research design and outputs from this project. In the end, I will introduce a little bit about the course that is currently being designed on the topic of educational research literacy. So that's basically what you are going to get from this presentation. First, about money. So a um, big chunk of money come from Kakenhi and small chunk come from MAJ. And currently, I spent <laughs> more or less 100% and spent half of it on coming here to meet my friends and uh, meet some new friends as well. And, uh, um, you know, to my surprise, at the beginning, I thought I'm going to spend a lot of money on developing one um, Google Chrome extension uh, using this funding. But in the end, I outsource it to a developer who finished the whole uh, task within two months using very little budget. So that was quite surprising to me. And um, also spent some money on Canva. Um, maybe you know it's a visual design uh, tool that require annual subscription to access its advanced feature for designing very nice posters, videos, etc. And then some went to the administration cost of my university. Now the project's lifespan is like 50% finished, but I still have several tasks to finish in the coming six months. But the money is more or less spent. And uh, let's talk about the technical aspects. Um, I use Hawk Host, which I use since I was in Hong Kong. So I'm very familiar with the Hawk Hosting service. So I use this one with a budget about 143 US dollars for two years hosting with them. And uh, I use the Moodle version 4.0.2 to build this platform. 
and I purchased a single app license to um, to make the Moodle platform appear a little bit more user friendly. And the theme is called Maker. Um, I tried to attract more users from different um, um, channels, such as Google, LinkedIn, and Facebook. So I enable the authentication to allow those users to directly log in without uh, re registering in the platform. Of course, they can also use their own email to register. And uh, tried, I tried to customize the, um, um, the language of the platform by replacing the course with event. So it becomes more event oriented than course oriented. And I use course templates plugin to implement a standardized event style so that every uh, event can apply that template in the end. So that basically every event has the same out outlook of the style, the procedure. And then I use big blue button thanks to the support from Adam and Tom from Blue Sky Project. So it's running very well. So let's talk about the Chrome extension Google Scholar OJC Checker first. As I mentioned, I outsource this to a developer in Sri Lanka. And through several different um, developer hiring platforms such as Upwork, Code Mentor, and Fever. And in the end, one developer responded, and that's I spent around $120 um, on, on such a feature that can allow users who search for um, articles in Google Scholar uh, after they install this plugin to their um, Chrome browser, they will be able to see um, two buttons on their, um, as you can see on the right um, of the screenshot. They will see two buttons. One is join OJC, which stands for Online Journal Club. One is create OJC. So if um, this button, uh, this extension basically enable the match between the article's title and the event's title, which is um, the same with the journal article's title. So basically matching the journal article's title in Google uh, Scholar and with researchic.com platform so that when there's a match, you can directly join this OJC. If there isn't, then you have the create OJC button available so you can create a new event. Now let's talk about the event management in this Moodle. Um, as I said, um, one very big initiative from this project will be to um, invite about 100 global educational researchers to share their experience of reading educational literature, um, especially the um, journal articles in the education um, domain. And the, the, um, the intended audience is the postgraduate research students, no matter it's master students or doctor students who need to read a lot of educational um, literature. So um, first step of this event management is that I create 100 empty events using the CSV upload, bulk upload courses function of Moodle. And because I um, installed the um, course template um, plugin and the format, the default format associated with it, its kickstart. So when you choose kickstart as the topic format, uh, what, it, what it does is that it gives you a list of templates um, on the landing page of the course. So you can select uh, what templates you want to choose to apply to your course. And the second one is I create, the second step is I create a standard event template using um, the, the plugin I installed on the Moodle. 
And the flow is quite uh, the same. So first, welcome everybody to the event. And then we have the pre-test and post-test of a uh, measurement of the uh, educational research literacy levels. And then between the pre-test and post-test, um, there are two videos uh, from shared by the invited researcher. The first one is to ask the researcher to share their screen and demonstrate in a minimum of 15 minutes um, how they actually read a selected paper. So they select a journal article and they demonstrate how to read it. The second video, which happens in researcher talk part, it's more general. So he asks the researcher to talk about how they identify the relevant um, educational articles, how do they organize them, and how do they uh, read them in general. So through these two videos, I hope that um, this 100 educational researchers will be able to share um, in, in, in a brief way to post grad eight research students how they process this educational um, literature. And then after that, um, it's a section of social reading and community uh, engagement of different activities. So the event format basically is like this. So um, the third step is I used the template um, plugin course, template plugin to create this course as the template. So it can be then applied later. So the fourth step is to apply this template to um, an MT event. So when the, as you can see on the right of the um, screen, OJC event style classic, that's the current um, used template uh, for all template, uh, for all course, uh, for all events um, on researchic.com. So once you click use template, um, all the content I create uh, will be copied to this course so that um, the event hosts, which uh, who are those researchers, they don't need to design anything um, on the event page because it's all pre pre layout. So when you cl cl click the preview button, you will be able to see how it looks like um, this template course. So um, this is a brief screenshot of what it looks um, when you enter uh, a template course, uh, when you enter an event, uh, first is welcome, second is a pretest, and you have the um, video embedded from YouTube. So um, we ask the researchers to record, they send us the link, and then we upload it to our YouTube channel of the platform and then embed it back here so it doesn't cause um, much video load um, on the platform. And then the second video and the third section is the social reading and the engagement part and the post test. So um, the very difficult part is the researcher recruiting, actually. So I tried different ways. I used different uh, um, educator listing. Um, I went to conferences to present about this project. I use my personal network um, and I also ask them to refer other researchers to join. And lately we try to use um, um, different universities' websites to search for relevant um, educational researchers to join. Um, but so far what works better, comparatively better, is uh, use some index of educational researchers and personal network to, uh, to invite people. So um, I also integrate the Google Analytics to this platform. So there are some analytics available. Um, so far, I have uh, managed to invite about 17 hosts from um, about na nine nations and regions, and they're from 14 un universities. There are different um, places, visitors, about uh, um, over 1,200, but in the end, only 67 registered to this platform so far. And so I, I, pre, I provided some invitation letter and uh, uh, which, which was sent by email to different educational um, um, researchers. 
And once they agreed, uh, a welcome on board the letter was sent to them. So these are all, all um, pre prepared so that my um, collaborators in the project can also use this to invite relevant researchers. So um, as I said before, two, two videos are expected to uh, from the educational researchers. Um, and uh, they basically spent, um, well, all these events, they are not synchronous. So it's a synchronous, that means um, the hosts of the events, they don't need to come to the, um, to the, to the platform in a design, um, in a selected time and date. Um, they just pre-record the videos as requested and published on the platform. And then later we invite students from different um, places to join the event. And these two videos are only um, used as the base lecture uh, videos um, to inspire students, to guide students. Um, but the um, videos honors, the videos presenters, they don't actually um, interact with uh, um, students real time on this platform. So um, in order to make the submission, um, the workflow, uh, workflow of the, um, the, the hosts, the educational researchers more smooth, I also create a course um, on, on the Moodle platform, uh, which is actually an action guide for every uh, educational researcher to follow. So there are three uh, assignments they needed to submit um, so first is they need to select a, a published journal article and submit it to this first assignment activity. And the second and third assignment is to submit the video link through um, either Google Drive or Dropbox. And then the fourth task um, is to ask them to post some questions to uh, inspire students uh, further thinking about this paper. Um, but once, you know, every researcher, um, their, their ability of recording videos or um, prepare for video recording, the, the um, competence, competence was quite different, actually. Um, but in the end, um, once the videos are available, uh, we download them to the local disk and use Camtasha um, software to edit these videos. Um, when some videos are not uh, meeting the criteria, we ask for a second recording and uh, then we add to them together in a way uh, that can satisfy the overall quality. And then we export them to, um, to local disk from Cantasia and then upload the videos to YouTube. In the end, we call back the video link to each event. So throughout this whole process, actually researchers either um, interact with us through uh, email or um, they can just go on this platform and uh, um, send us some questions if they have any problems. They don't actually interact with the event pages um, as we plan first, because um, from the preliminary research um, findings, we found that a synchronous online journal club actually resulted in better, um, better results. So that's why we, in the end, opted for the asynchronous um, um, version of the event management. So the second part is the project management. Um, it's always very lonely to do research project, but this time I managed to hire, not hire, to have some three very beautiful young ladies from the University of Hong Kong. Um, we all studied in the same uh, master program in the university. So I'm like their senpai and they were um, volunteering in this project to gain some um, experience. Um, I try also to integrate the project management of the whole team into the Moodle because there are so many other tools to use, but I don't want to get lost in all those tools. I would like to keep everything in the same place. So I explore a little bit about how to use Moodle as a project management tool as well. 
So on the left side of the um, Moodle platform I developed, there's a starter kit. And there, uh, as you can see into these two arrows, one is development activities, one is research IC work, work space. In the workspace, actually, it's a sequence of um, team meetings. So every month, uh, we together use the big blue button uh, video meeting rooms uh, to meet together and discuss about what have been achieved. And uh, <clears throat> should I still use this one? This is very annoying. <laughs> okay. So, um, so every month we, we meet up as a team and we, we, we basically I assign them tasks of this new month, com, new com, new coming, uh, upcoming month. And, uh, and we discuss about what have been done in the past month. And the lab, uh, the team meeting um, um, got recorded by the big blue button. And then um, I downloaded them um, to the local disk and uploaded to our YouTube channel because I think Adam told me that big blue button, actually the server can only host for one year and the videos will be erased, right? So more or less like that way. So I, I downloaded them for archive purpose, uh, but we use the uh, meeting room of big blue button to, um, to do the online meeting among team members um within the Moodle platform so we don't use other tools like Zoom or Google Meet so it's very easy to schedule inside Moodle and it's quite helpful actually so research SC uh, workspace has the uh, basically archived meetings uh, meeting videos and upcoming um team meeting schedules and all the related resources and, and activities um a monthly members in this course. So you can understand it as a course page for the research IC team to collaborate. So in the development activities, it's actually an online forum for the whole team to track um, each different type of um, task arranged to them. And we use the um, standard tags and the random tags to tag um, what tasks have been done, what are ongoing, what are to be done. And we also um, assign these different tasks to different team members by using tag. So as you can see, task to Jinjin, task to Cindy. So um, when the team member come to this place, um, they can click on their name, task to Cindy, for, task to Jinjin, for instance, will uh, and will search for all the um, po forum posts that were tagged with the task to Jinjin. So I can understand what tasks are to be done uh, or um, already done or ongoing. So about the research design and outputs, um, I also try to organize them on the page of research activities. Uh, it's accessible on the platform. Um, I organize all the research outputs and schedule the research activities um, on one course page, basically. And all the posters, articles, and uh, um, other materials related to my participating in conferences to present this project or my submission to journal articles are recorded fully on this page. And so far, um, most of my, yes. Public. Yeah, it's public access. You don't need to um, enroll yourself or whatsoever. Yeah. So, so far, I published some uh, papers on some conferences. And now I'm trying to focus more on developing the alert measurement with an uh, Austrian uh, researcher, um, uh, Ophoff. And uh, um, I would say so far the, the progress of research is lacking behind because I spent a lot of time developing this platform and inviting people, trying to set up all the, all the infrastructure of the, um, the event management thing. It's quite time consuming. So the research part is a little bit lacking behind, but uh, making progress there. Um, I also delivered some keynotes um, to a conference 
last year uh, about AI and education, although it was not about AI and education for this platform, but the organizer insisted that this can be uh, further integrated with the AI tool to help the students learn better about uh, the research literacy. So um, there are two posters published online as well about this project. Uh, if you're interested, you can go there and have a look. So the final part is about the course design on educational research literacy. So um, this course is basically based on a book that I was reading uh, about educational uh, expo exploring educational research literacy, which provides quite different framework of analyzing research literacy, um, educational research literacy. Um, you know, many researchers they actually analyze. Um, what they, they explain educational research literacy or educational, uh, well, research literacy can be segmented into different fields. For instance, medical research literacy can be very different from educational research literacy. So um, when we talk about research literacy, um, previous research showed that um, you needed to understand, for instance, statistical literacy uh, numerical literacy, which can be sometimes, um, you know, replaceable between these two. And then you have to understand uh, the um, texts very well. And you also need to understand the visuals such as tables and figures inside the um, inside the publications. This is a very commonly used framework. Um, but in this exploring educational research literacy, I think they propose one more um, actionable um, um, training for educational research literacy, which is to divide the literacy into, according to the structure of the um, educational paper, uh, research paper, for instance, they have the um, title literacy, abstract literacy, introduction literacy, method literacy, etc. So this way, actually, it's quite connected to reality. Um, it's not that abstract, it's quite followable. Um, students, when they read a paper, that's exact exact structure they are reading and what kind of literacy is required for each part of the paper um, is quite well explained in this textbook. So I used that textbook trying to develop an online course. And lately I am experimenting with H5P and uh, it's quite interesting um, feature of Moodle. So I try to use H5P to develop all the um, content inside this course. And I use Lumi um, as application to develop um, H5P um, course content and, uh, um, and import into the Moodle. So I use Lumi, which is installed in my local machine, and then I export it as H5P format, and I, I import into the course on Moodle platform. So all the videos and images that are upcoming will be used um, will be using Canva um, um, tool to to develop. Um, so the course will be also available um, to the public uh, once it's completed. I would just to show you some screenshot um, about what is going on inside the course. So I tried to experiment with the different functions of H5P. For instance, this one is image hotspots, um, clickable, and uh, describe the um, six, um, six categories of research um, article um, titles. So there are different types of research um, title, uh, research um, publication title you can use. You can, it's kind of like template you can um, adopt to write your own um, um, article title. And this is a flashcards. Basically, you flip it and you see um, the answer uh, on the back. And this is a quiz. I must say that when you do the H5P, you really need to fully understand the function of the tool and at the same time, the, the, the characteristics of the content in order to reach a balance um, to decide what tool to use to, the, to best bring out the content to your audience. So that's quite tricky and challenging part of the, um, this effort trying to implement H5P. Um, 
but we will see how it goes. For instance, this one, um, it allows the um, students to slow down to read this paragraph, but in a lot of way, um, they probably need to guess. They needed to look on the right of the list, guess what um, best fit into the current empty uh, field I'm looking at. So that's what I'm saying. Maybe drag and drop words will not be the best fit for um, delivering this content, for instance. So I'm still ex exploring on this direction. And this is a picture that I used to, um, I used uh, Kama to develop uh, that basically tell you um, um, writing abstract is like a, a switch it's like a list of switches you can uh, integrate into that small chunk of text. Um, some are compulsory. You have to, to include it in this abstract. Some are optional. Uh, so that is just to demonstrate to students um, what can be turned off, what can be turned on to express the um, to express the saying that abstract is like a combination of switches. So that's basically what I have done so far with this project. And I really hope some of you will be interested in, um, for instance, organizing one online journal club on this platform to share your um, research reading experience. Um, the first 100 events will be focusing on education and technology. Uh, so, so far there are about 17 researchers from different um, universities. Uh, there are, uh, I think, about seven already finished on um, both videos. So if you go to researchic.com, you will see um, quite a list of events that you can attend already to access those videos. Um, so thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, um, we can we can just discuss about it. If you don't, then um, you can either email me later or. I think I'm a little bit curious as to why you think the research side of it in terms of your public papers is lacking. You already have <laughs> three, and you got the match funding in maybe October. Yes. Yeah. No, it seems in, that you're, you're making a pretty good pace there. No, no, I feel like when it comes to research publication, journal articles counts more than conference papers uh, from, from what I what I perceive. So, um, you know, in the end, a, a lot of um, performance related thing are from um, journal articles. So, so far, I mean, half a year already passed. I didn't publish any journal article. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But still, I mean, I think you're probably still ahead of uh, most graduate students. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Adam. Okay. Arashima sensei, so. And actually, lots and lots and lots of questions. The templating stuff was awesome. The, I mean, there's a whole heap of features in Moodle that I didn't even know existed, and I want to know about them. They're important, so we'll definitely talk. Let's grab something to eat and talk about it. <laughs> there may be many other questions, but time is limited, and the AGM is for the Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye.